So until now, we've done all of our rendering right here on the design layer. We've been using the rendering menus to do it directly here on the design layer. There's a few reasons you don't want to do that. The first being that this is going to do a rendering at the resolution of your screen. So this is a retina display that I'm doing the demo on right now. So it's doing a much higher resolution image than is necessary. To get around that, we'll go to View, Create Viewport, and we'll just make it on a new sheet layer. Custom render works styles. Name it custom render works styles. We don't need to change any of the properties. We'll leave these alone in default for now. And by default, it's going to do what it did earlier when we made that other viewport. It's going to create it in a hidden line, but that's fine. We, we're going to update it in a different rendering style. I'm going to click OK, and we'll have our viewport on a sheet layer. Now, to control, just a first a quick note. Now, since you've watched all the other Getting Started Guides as we recommended, you know that the viewport's resolution is controlled by Sheet Layer DPI, which is found under Tools, Organization, and Sheet Layers. See these other view sheet layers I have set up for later on? And then this one down here, we have set up for custom render work styles. It defaulted to 72. 72 is generally what a printer would print at. Uh, not a high quality printer, a photo printer, but a regular plotter would print at about 72. Generally, this is good because if I increase this to 150, the same viewport on a sheet layer of DPI 72 would take twice as long to render on a sheet layer of DPI 150. It would be twice the resolution, but for quick rendering checking, generally we'll want to use 72 to start with. That's fine. We'll leave it there. Now, this viewport is back to wireframe. We haven't hit update yet, but we don't want to render it in hidden line, which is what it'll be set to. In fact, we're going to create our own custom render work style. And here we'll focus on the viewport. We're going to create our own custom render work style. So down here in the resource browser, just hold Alt or Option down and click on one of the triangles to collapse all of them at the same time. We want to go into render work styles and just right click in a blank area here and choose new render work style in render works getting started guide part one. Now, this is going to start with custom render works from scratch. So everything's going to be set low. The options are going to be mostly turned off, which is generally what you want to start with. We're going to start and do one of these renderings. We'll name it My Custom Render Works Style. We're going to do a rendering with just the basic settings. So you can see what it looks like with no changes whatsoever. There are. We can see that in the resource browser. We'll select the viewport and we can choose that from the rendering styles. Choose background render. We'll explain foreground render in a moment. We'll, as I mentioned before, we'll do the hidden line in front of it. And then background render, render work style, and we'll choose my custom render work style. That's applied, and we'll update this viewport. You'll notice this will update much faster than it does in the design layer because it's only having to do about a quarter of the pixels that the design layer had to do on this particular display. So the first thing we'll go and solve is right here. We don't want this edging. We don't want this, it's called aliasing, where the pixels are sort of sticking out. We want to solve that problem, but we don't, in this example, want to solve any other problems. Let's say we just want to take care of that. We'll edit our render work style. And in here, you'll notice there's an option called anti-aliasing. This, and if you hover over it, you can read down here at the bottom, check this to filter the rendering and reduce pixelated or jagged edges. Uncheck it to speed up rendering. We'll turn it on. All of these options are enableable and disableable. The quality settings control the quality of them, whether they're turned on or not. So if I have anti-aliasing turned off, I'm still able to set the quality of anti-aliasing here. It will still let me change it, even though it's turned off and won't do anything. So if I render this now, it's going to be exactly the same because anti-aliasing is turned off. I'm going to turn this to high, however. Under options, I'm going to enable anti-aliasing. So the only options we've changed where we entered the render work settings, enabled anti-aliasing, and set the anti-aliasing quality to high instead of low. We'll hit OK. And because we want to compare these two like we did before, we're going to duplicate the viewport, Alt or Option and drag or Control on Windows. So now we have two duplicates of the same viewport, which have the same rendering style applied to them. So we'll go ahead and just update this one. The other one will remain out of date. There we are. That's all done. And now you can see, even at the zoom level, it's pretty clear. Now the next thing we'll explain is, uh, we'll just show you how to disable something. In rendering, you have a lot 
less control than you would in a real photograph, and you have a lot more in other areas. For instance, in this custom render work style, which we'll right click and choose to edit, we'll now disable shadows entirely. So we'll uncheck this and we'll turn off shadows completely. Okay, okay to this. We'll update this second viewport here again. Actually, now we can go ahead and update this one. Remember, both of these viewports now share the same custom render work style, but this one was not updated after we made that change. Now that we've made the change again, if we update this one, we can compare this viewport to the previous one. You can do this to just have two viewports that you go back and forth and just see one change at a time, or you can duplicate the viewport multiple times. But for this example, we'll just alternate which viewport we change so we can show just the past change between the two. Update this viewport. There we are. Now we've disabled shadows entirely, which is not possible in real life. So in here now, you can see where there's a shadow going this corner. You can see the shadow of the trees, the shadow of the building. Those are now completely gone. Oh, when you see renderings in other applications, the shadows is what gives it away. The shadows is what you see as not looking natural, not looking possible. Normally, you would leave shadows on for almost any RenderWorks mode. Uh, they don't contribute too terribly much to the rendering time. Uh, that's more of how many lights you have in there. We just have one Heliodon object lighting the document, and in this render mode, currently there's no background, so it's not getting light from that either. The next thing we'll do, and we'll just simply go right down the list. Edit this custom render work style. We'll turn shadows back on, and this time uh, we'll disable textures to show you what that looks like. Hit OK, and again, we'll compare this one to that one. We'll simply update this viewport. So this one will now get its shadows back, but it will also no longer have textures. There, now you can see that this looks very strange. Uh, there's no more transparency because textures are what is required to have a transparency or reflectivity. You can see here that the different objects, even though they render the same, they have the same texture, they might have had different colors to start with. This could have been done when the architect drafted the building just to keep an eye on which was which, or they just have a color by class. But you can see what RenderWorks does to sort of pave over things about the model that look that way. You can do a lot of work with textures. Like for instance, this water appears to be Ripley, even though it is simply a 3D polygon. It is nothing special, it's just a flat object. So now we'll go back in and edit that custom render style again. We'll turn textures back on. And this time, we'll enable these options. Enable blurriness, displacement mapping, caustics, and grass. This time, we'll just update this viewport since we don't need to compare anything to not having textures anymore. Now, apart from this one no longer having shadows still, this doesn't look very different, does it? You still see this waviness of the water. You still see a few other things that look pretty much the same. That's because we enabled options that are not currently present in this viewport. So if you turn on blurriness or you turn on displacement mapping or you turn on caustics, those things are controlled by specifically by lights in the case of caustics and textures in the case of displacement mapping and grass and things like that. So since we don't have any of those turned on, those render options do nothing. That was just to explain to you that you can turn on and off things in rendering settings that don't affect the actual rendering until you include one of those things. So if I go into the rendering settings again, so these settings will not do anything for our rendering. So they can be left off. That's just something else that will give us some time back in the rendering. It will save us time since we don't need these settings. Colors can be disabled. And colors is a little different than just disabling textures. Colors will not only disable the colors that we saw when we turned off textures before. Go ahead and uncheck that now. Click OK. And we'll go ahead and update the viewport on the left. Click Update there. Colors will also take the color out of any textures that used it as well. So you'll still get the transparency of a texture or the reflectivity of it, but it won't have any color to it. The image-based part of the texture or the color behind it will simply be gone. So this should give us what's known as a white card rendering, which is a pre-built render work style that we'll use as well. There we are. You can see it already. You can see that we sort of have the silhouette of the tree, but there's that cross plane that I was talking about before. The silhouette of the tree, but none of the color. So we have shadows. We have the sort of ripple effect that you have on particular textures, but we don't have any of the color to it. So that's sort of an artistic method you can use if you want to show, not necessarily a black and white, but just a colorless rendering. 
And between you and me, it also means you don't have to do as much heavy work on coloring the textures. You don't have to work so hard on what the textures look like. You can just give an idea of what the model looks like, and it has sort of an artistic feel to it, when basically it's just saving you having to do a lot of extra work to get to a more realistic rendering. But that is the end goal, so we'll keep going on toward photorealistic rendering. And with that in mind, uh, we'll close it out here, and the next video will cover indirect lighting, which is one of the key, if not the key, features in getting a realistic appearance in your render.